Let's work on some problems. Calculate the force of gravity that exists between a 60 kilogram person and an 80 kilogram person who are 50 centimeters apart from each other. So let's draw a picture. So let's say that this is the 60 kilogram person and here is the 80 kilogram person. How can we calculate the gravitational force between the two? Now gravity is a force of attraction. Gravity brings matters together. So gravity is going to pull the 60 kilogram person towards the 80 kilogram person and the 60 kilogram person exerts a force on the 80 kilogram person and so these two forces they're equal in magnitude but opposite in direction and this represents the force of gravity. Now the way to calculate it is to use this equation. It's equal to g times the mass of the first person times the mass of the second person divided by the distance between them. And that distance has to be squared. Now the distance between them is 50 centimeters. And we need to convert that to meters. One meter is 100 centimeters. So 50 centimeters is equivalent to 0.5 meters. You got to divide it by 100. G is a universal gravitation constant. It's 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. And the units are newtons times square meters divided by square kilograms. So let's go ahead and calculate the gravitational force. So it's going to be 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times the first mass, which is 60 kilograms, times the second mass of 80 divided by the square of the distance, which is 0.5 meters squared. So the answer is very small. It's 1.28 times 10 to the minus 6 newtons. So that's the force of gravity between these two individuals. Number two, calculate the force of gravity of a 25 kilogram block resting on the earth. And we're given the radius of the earth. So let's say this is the earth. And we have a block resting on it. What's the force of gravity that is exerted on that block, which points towards the center of the earth? How can we calculate it? So to calculate the gravitational force, we can use this equation. G m1 times m2 over r squared. So g is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. And the mass of the first block is 25. The mass of the earth is 5.97 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. And the distance between the center of the block and the center of the earth is approximately the radius of the earth. The block is going to be relatively small so we could say it's about the radius of the earth which is 6.38 times 10 to the 6. And don't forget to square it. So let's type this in. So the gravitational force is 244.6 newtons. So that's how you can get the answer using that equation. It turns out that the gravitational force is simply the weight force of the object. So the weight is simply mass times the gravitational acceleration. So we have a 25 kilogram mass and the gravitational acceleration on the Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. So it's 25 times 9.8, and you get about 245 newtons. So these answers are about the same. So this is the most easiest way to find the weight force of an object on any planet if you know the gravitational acceleration of that planet. Now let's work on this problem. What is the force of gravity that is exerted on the Earth by the Sun? 
So we're given the mass of the sun and the earth and the distance between them. So let's start with a picture. So let's say that's the sun and this is the earth. So the sun is going to exert a gravitational force on the earth. The sun is going to pull the earth toward itself. And the earth pulls the sun toward itself. Those two forces are equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. So we need to calculate those two forces. Now we're given the distance between the center of the earth and the sun. And that's 1.496 times 10 to the 11 meters. We have the masses as well. So all we need to do is plug everything in into this equation. So g is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. And the mass of the sun is 1.99 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. And the mass of the earth is 5.97 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. And let's divide it by r squared. So that's the square of the distance between them. So you should get a gravitational force of 3.54 times 10 to the 22 newtons. So that's the force that the sun exerts on the earth, and it's also the force that the earth exerts on the sun. They're the same. Now let's move on to number four. Planet X and planet Y have a mass of 3 times 10 to the 24 kilograms and 4.5 times 10 to the 25 kilograms. So let's draw a picture. So let's say this is planet X and this is planet Y. Now we're given the gravitational force between these two planets. Our goal is to find the distance between the two planets. And R is going to represent the distance between the center of planet X to the center of planet Y. So let's start with this equation. And let's rearrange it to isolate the R value. So I'm going to multiply both sides by R squared. So on the right side, these will cancel. And so I have F times R squared is equal to GM1 times M2. So next, I'm going to divide both sides by F. And so R squared is G M1 M2 divided by F. Now, the last thing I need to do is take the square root of both sides. So R is going to be the square root of G M1 M2 over F. So let's go ahead and get the answer. So that's going to be 6.67 times 10 to negative 11. Multiplied by the mass of planet X, which is 3 times 10 to the 24, times the mass of planet Y, which is 4.5 times 10 to the 25. And then we need to divide it by the gravitational force that's acting on these two planets. And that's 3.6 times 10 to the 20 newtons. So the answer is about 5.0 times 10 to the 9. So it's about 5 billion meters. So that's the distance between the two planets, between the centers. Number 5. 
Calculate the net force exerted on the moon when it's between the Earth and the sun. And we're given the distance between the moon and the Earth and the distance between the sun and the moon. So let's draw a picture. So we're going to say this is the sun, and this is the moon, and here's the Earth. Now, the sun is going to exert a gravitational force on the moon, and it's going to pull it towards the sun. Let's call it Fs, the force that the sun exerts on the moon. And the Earth also pulls the moon toward itself. Let's call it Fe. Our goal is to calculate the net force. The net force is going to be the difference between these two forces. Based on the way it's drawn, Fe is pointed in a positive x direction, so that's going to be positive and Fs is in the negative x direction, so I'm going to put a negative sign in front of it. So because these two forces are anti-parallel, the net force is the difference between those two forces. So let's go ahead and calculate Fe first. So it's going to be G times the mass of the Earth multiplied by the mass of the Moon, because this force is between the Earth and the Moon divided by the square of the distance between them. So that's 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. The mass of the Earth is 5.97 times 10 to the 24. And the mass of the Moon is 7.35 times 10 to the 22 kilograms. And the distance between the Moon and the Earth, that's 3.84 times 10 to the 8 meters. And let's square it as well. So let's go ahead and type this in. So you should get 1.985 times 10 to the 20 newtons. So that's the force that the Earth exerts on the Moon towards the right. Now let's calculate Fs. So it's going to be G times the mass of the Moon times the mass of the Sun divided by the square of the distance. So G is not going to change. It's the same value, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. The mass of the moon is still 7.35 times 10 to the 22. And the mass of the sun is 1.99 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. Now the distance between the sun and the moon is given to us. That's 1.492 times 10 to the 11 squared. So you should get a force of 4.383 times 10 to the 20 newtons. So now that we have these two forces, we can now calculate the net force. So the net force is going to be Fe, which is 1.9. 85 times 10 to the 20 minus Fs, which is 4.383 times 10 to the 20. And so this is going to be negative 2.398 times 10 to the 20 newtons. Now the reason why we have a negative sign is because the net force is directed towards the left, towards the negative x direction. And so what that means is that this force, Fs, is greater than Fe. So the gravitational force exerted by the sun on the moon is greater than the gravitational force exerted 
by the Earth on a moon during a solar eclipse, for example, when the moon blocks the sun relative to the Earth. So the moon is being pulled more towards the sun than the Earth. And the reason why that happens is because the mass of the sun is so much more larger than the mass of the Earth. Even though the distance between the Earth and the moon is a lot less than the distance between the sun and the moon. But the mass of the sun is just a lot larger. But as we can see, these two values are very close. So the gravitational force exerted by the sun on the moon is a little bit more than twice the gravitational force exerted by the Earth on the moon. But nevertheless, in this situation, this force is greater. So the moon feels a net force that pulls it towards the sun. Number six, what is the net force exerted on the moon by the Earth and the sun when the two gravitational forces acting on the moon are at right angles to each other? So how can we find the answer to this question? Well, let's draw a picture, just like we did before. So let's say this is the sun, and we're going to have to put the moon at this position. Let me draw a little bit bigger, and let's place the Earth here. Now we want the two forces acting on the moon to be at right angles with each other. You could put the Earth here if you want to. It won't change your answer. Now, the sun is going to pull the moon toward itself, and the earth is going to pull the moon towards the earth. And so these two forces are at right angles. And so there's going to be a net force that is going to be directed in that direction. Now, we know the force of the sun exerted on the moon is going to be greater than the force of the earth exerted on it. And based on the last example, the values shouldn't be that different. So let's rewrite the values that we had in problem 5. Fe was 1.985 times 10 to the 20 newtons. And Fs, that was 4.383 times 10 to the 20 newtons. So let's calculate the net force. So I'm going to redraw this picture. So here's the net force. It's going to be the hypotenuse of the right triangle. Fs is in the x direction. Fe is in the y direction. So regardless of how you draw it, you can also draw it this way if you want. You can say here's the net force. Here's Fs. And this is Fe. This is still the hypotenuse. So the net force is going to be the square root of the square of Fs plus the square of Fe. So this is going to be 4.383 times 10 to the 20 squared plus 1.985 times 10 to the 20 squared. All right, so let's go ahead and get the answer. So the net force is equal to 4.812 times 10 to the 20 newtons. So that's the net force acting on the Earth, I mean on the moon, when it's at this position. 